So this Lumos Aura projector has recently been a pretty popular 1080p projector that costs under $1,000. So sometime back, out of interest and also wanting to dabble in the projectors for the first time, I've decided to purchase one and see for myself whether is it any good. Now that I've used it for a good 9 months in two different locations, I think it's about time I give this projector a proper evaluation. I'm sure by this point there are already many reviews out there of this projector by various YouTubers and online personalities. So in order for me to add to the conversation, I need to dive deeper into analyzing the actual picture quality of the projector, something that seems to be lacking even at the time of this recording. Now this review pertains only to the non-smart version of the projector that I have here and it's going to focus much more on the picture quality. Therefore, this review is not going to cover some of the basic features or the Android features of this smart version that you can already read in other reviews. Some of you may not know this, but I actually run a small video post-production business. And although I'm not a professional screen calibrator, color accuracy is very important down here, and I do calibrate my screens every once in a while. I've been using this projector in my home for about 6 months, projecting it on a 68-inch screen before moving it to this office space to project a 100-inch image, so as to provide a large screen viewing experience for my clients. Now, I do have this professional broadcast monitor if they need a more accurate color reference, but we'll get back to this later. So let's look at some of the features that you can use on this projector if you are unable to project the image straight on. One is using the lens, which is also known as lens shift, and the other is to use digital keystone correction. But there's one very important difference between the two. If you use keystone correction, your display resolution will be compromised. You can see this effect when you have straight horizontal or vertical lines in the image, and you will notice aliasing or jagged edges on the lines if you use keystone correction. So ideally, you would want to use the lens to adjust the image as much as possible and keep keystone correction to the minimum. The problem is that you only have vertical lens shift on the oral projector and no horizontal lens shift, which is a little disappointing. There's also no zoom lens on the projector, but that's to be expected for a budget projector. I had to use horizontal keystoning when I was using this in my home setup, but even with that, the image still appears more horizontally stretched than a proper 16x9 image, which is also an issue that is very distracting. So essentially, if you are using keystoning, you're going to have a stretched image that is a lower resolution. Not ideal at all. Another issue that needs to be addressed is the actual quality of the lens. Unfortunately, even when I can get most of the image in focus, there are still areas in the middle of the image that's out of focus. Now, Lumos does claim that this projector isn't really meant for business or school use where you're going to be projecting slides, but seeing this inconsistent blurriness on the image is still a little disappointing. Also, when using vertical lens shift, there will be a part of the image, either the top or the bottom, that will be a little bit blurry, so you have to decide on which part of the image you want to sacrifice your sharpness. On top of that, after a couple of months of use, I did spot what seems to be a little bit of moulding on the lens itself. It's especially noticeable when you look at the lens on the side when it's on, although that doesn't seem to directly affect the projected image quality itself, but it does put the QC of the lens in a not very good light. Moving on to colour accuracy, we will be comparing the projected image to a professional broadcast monitor. In this case, it's this TV Logic LVM232W. Although this thing looks small and it's only in Full HD, this thing can cost up to 2.7k Sing dollars because this is the kind of monitor that most movies and shows are mastered on and it's almost exactly what the filmmakers will see when they finalize their movie. As for the calibration tool that we will be using to measure the more objective color balance metrics, we will be using this i1 Display Pro Plus calorimeter to measure and balance the RGB gain values of the projector. There's a very comprehensive guide by the YouTube channel Hardware Unbox where they will guide you on how to use this colorimeter to do some basic screen calibration. And I will leave a link in the description box below. But the idea is that you'll be using a software called DisplayCal to measure your RGB gain values. And you adjust those values on your display device until they are as even as possible. The only difference between the Hardware Unbox guide and this is that for projectors, instead of hanging the device over the screen, you'll point the lens at the projector image at a distance. There are definitely more advanced ways to calibrate screens, but using a colorimeter is relatively easier for beginners and will still give you a very good baseline for color accuracy. You are going to want to do this in as dark of a room as possible for the most accurate results. Also, unlike what the guide on Lumos website says, you should project the image on a wall that is as pure white as possible if you want color accuracy. On the broadcast monitor, you can see that even straight out of the box, the RGB values are very close to being even and usually doesn't need much tweaking when you recalibrate it every once in a while. However, 
with the default values on the Lumos Aura Projector, you can tell it is very imbalanced. And even after tweaking to balance it as much as possible, the image still does not look anywhere close to the broadcast monitor, and I have to tweak it manually by eye thereafter. After much experimentation, these are the RGB values that I find delivers the most accurate image colour to me, at least to my eyes. Do note that your results may vary, and if these values still don't work for you, then I recommend you to do a more thorough calibration. And you can start by using the hardware unbox guide that was mentioned earlier. So, it's very clear by this point that many casual users and online personalities are very impressed with this projector. And I think a large part of it boils down to its very affordable $299 Sing dollar price point. And to think that even 10 years ago, a projector like this with Full HD and everything cost at least 7 to 10 times more. But back to the main question, is this projector suitable for home theatre enthusiasts? The short answer is no. And how about using it in a video post-production environment like this? That's an even stronger no. But that's it. It is still possible to get a pretty decent image out of this projector. It's just that you need to do a lot of tweaking. But then again, the target customer for this particular projector probably don't want to go all this trouble to go and calibrate it, or they don't even know how. They probably just want an affordable projector to watch their movies and shows on a big screen anyway, and they'll probably get a smart version since it has more video and streaming apps on it. On a personal note, having used this projector to showcase my editing and colour work to my clients, I haven't got any serious complaints. But that's also because I had to heavily manually tweak the colour to match the broadcast monitor as much as possible. I also wish that Lumos would include a horizontal lens shift in a future revision of this product. And maybe also even offer a more premium version of this projector with both that and a zoom lens. But until they do that, there are honestly other projector models from other brands that will deliver a much better quality image than the Lumos Auros, even the mid-range ones. And they'll probably have more lens shift and zoom functions. But also bear in mind that those will start off from at least $800 or $1,000 and above. So overall, it's not a bad product if you're dipping your hands into the projectors for the first time. And the low price of entry makes it a really compelling buy for casuals. However, I think most people who are stickler for picture quality and this is their first projector purchase, are going to be moderately impressed at first, but the minor but noticeable flaws, such as the uneven focus, the colour imbalance, and even a lack of in-lens adjustment options, are going to make them want to upgrade to a higher-end model later down the road. So I hope this review has given you some insight to the quality of the projector from a more high-end video and video post-production perspective. And I also hope that it's useful for casual users as well. I've also included a link to the full written review on the Blue Jeff blog that will cover some things that was unable to cover in this video review. And with that, thanks for watching.